welcome back yesterday in the previous lectures we uh, uh, discussed several uh, commonalities and differences between combustion systems and uh, in that uh, discussion uh, some fundamental aspects of flame structure and its dependence on reaction rate or transport processes or a combination of these were also discussed uh, what we will do today is introduce the formal structure which uh, enables computation of precise flame structures okay uh, these uh, formal uh, equations are nothing but the conservation equations okay so we'll uh, quickly uh, go over the basic conservation equations uh, and then uh, the equations in one dimensional form and uh, then look at uh, the connections between the general ideas that were introduced yesterday and uh, the conservation equations. So, the theoretical framework for combustion is based on the conservation principles. There are one, there are three conservation principles. One is conservation of mass and then uh, Newton's second law which relates force and changes in momentum and conservation of energy. So, the uh, conservation of mass is uh, in uh, combustion systems, mass is neither created nor destroyed. So, if we choose a, a packet of certain mass and track it in time, then the change in mass will be 0. That is what is expressed as dm by dt is 0. Okay. Newton's second law, you all know that if the same uh, parcel of mass that we are tracking, the uh, the motion of that is controlled by the Newton's second law, uh, is governed by the Newton's second law. So, it states that the force is the rate of change of momentum and both force and momentum are uh, vector quantities. So, this is in Cartesian coordinates, this will be essentially three equations for each component of velocity. And conservation of energy is a uh, statement of the first law of thermodynamics which we used yesterday, which states that uh, if you track a parcel of mass, the total energy of that uh, mass will change because of two uh, things. One is when heat is transferred to or out of that mass and the other is uh, because of work done on that mass. Okay. So, all phenomena that we have been discussing are governed by these principles. So, when these conservation principles are applied to a general flow of a reacting mixture which can change in time and also in three dimensions of space, we obtain a set of coupled partial differential equations referred to as the reactive Navier-Stokes equations. The general equations, the reactive Navier-Stokes equation with all the associated boundary and initial conditions, state equations to relate uh, pressure with uh, temperature and density and uh, concentration of reactants and products and detailed models for multi-component diffusion because in a reacting flow situation you may have areas or uh, parts of the flow where the concentration of reactants are higher than the concentration of the products and vice versa in some other zones, okay, in neighboring zones and therefore, this concentration gradients will drive mass diffusion. Okay. So, we need models for uh, accounting for the mass transfer because of concentration gradients which is usually done or assumed to follow fixed law of diffusion. And so, in the simple form it is assumed to follow fixed law of diffusion. Sometimes when you have to, uh, you may have to account for uh, a more detailed uh, diffusion uh, model to explain some phenomena. Okay. So, detailed models for multi-component diffusion, uh, you will find these equations along with uh, diffusion models and reaction models of variety of complexity and hierarchy in standard textbooks. For example, combustion fundamentals by F. A. Williams. Okay. Important thing is that general solutions are not available for the set of equations and therefore, that is the reason why we need simpler models and uh, identification of controlling parameters so that we can construct a simplified description of the process. One of the reasons why it is uh, uh, we do not have general solutions for these set of equations is because of the turbulence and its interaction with the uh, reactions and flame. Okay. So, turbulence and its reaction, its interaction with chemical reactions is one of the primary reasons for the complexity of the solutions. Of course, these days we have uh, computational capabilities and therefore, we can get numerical solutions for a wide variety of problems including cases with turbulent reactions. 
In fact, lot of progress has happened in the development of models for turbulence chemistry interactions, including uh, for premixed and non premixed and partially premixed conditions, okay, which has led to better understanding of mechanisms of ignition and re ignition, something that was discussed yesterday that flames can locally become extinct in a complex turbulent flow and it can reignite a while later. Okay. All these phenomena can now be uh, accurately captured using computational uh, tools. Okay. Flame holding, blow off, extinction, etc. Uh, are all uh, possible to uh, compute using uh, by numerically solving the conservation equations. But there is uh, something important that uh, I wanted to bring up and discuss. If you look at uh, the uh, uh, top journals in the field of combustion, for example, combustion and flame or proceedings of the combustion institute. So, browsing through these uh, journals uh, on combustion can give you an impression that that turbulent combustion is the norm and laminar flames are exceptions. Okay. A similar statement is also made in, in uh, you know courses in fluid mechanics that laminar flames, uh, laminar flow is exception and turbulence is the norm and <coughs> that laminar flames are helpful only because they offer a convenient laboratory model for validation of chemical kinetic mechanisms is the impression that one might get browsing through literature, but this is not correct. I will show you two examples of real life combustion systems where the dynamics is completely controlled by laminar flames. The first example is flames over surfaces of composite solid propellants. I think I should explain this figure in some detail. What you see here is a cross section of uh, a propellant, cross section of an AP HTPV propellant which contains two sizes of AP particles, one large the red color one and one small. The red color one, the red color particles are 200 micron in diameter and the blue color ones are 12 micron in diameter and they are embedded in a matrix of fuel. Okay. That is how, that is the general structure of a solid uh, propellant. You have oxidizer and fuel mixed together and the oxidizer embedded in a matrix of fuel. Okay. What is shown here is a CFD simulation of the flame structure over such a composite propellant. The solution, the CFT solution is shown for three different pressures, one at 6.8 atmospheres, another at 20 atmospheres and at 68 atmospheres. Okay. The, of course, you can see that there are a lot of differences between, there is a lot of change in the flame structure as the pressure changes okay, uh, with the same uh, structure of the propellant. The structure of the propellant that you see at the bottom are the same, but the structure of the flame on top changes with pressure. Okay. The general structure of uh, the flame over composite solid propellants can be described as an ensemble of premixed and non premixed flames okay, over a pack of AP particles embedded in HTPB matrix. Okay. The premixed flames uh, are formed over the surface of AP, which is ammonium perchlorate, which is a monopropellant. Like hydrazine, it can burn on its own, it can undergo self sustained deflagration. So, AP has a premixed monopropellant flame sitting right on top of it okay. and AP is surrounded by fuel. Okay. AP is an oxidizer rich monopropellant, so it will exothermically decompose, give off a large amount of oxy oxygen. Actually the decomposition products of ammonium perchlorate will have about 32 percent oxygen. So, what ammonium perchlorate, the way ammonium perchlorate uh, burns is it will have a flame over top of it which will burn the decomposition products of ammonium perchlorate and what comes out is a stream containing 32 percent oxygen. And this stream of oxidizer rich gases is surrounded by a stream of decomposition products of fuel or essentially fuel vapors. Okay. So, the fuel vapors, so now you have oxygen coming from the center, fuel coming from the side and this can form a non premixed flame. So, what you see here is Premixed flames over AP surfaces surrounded by non premixed flames formed by uh, reaction between AP and HTPB. Okay. So, what is happening as the pressure increases is remember that premixed flames under these conditions are essentially flat one dimensional flames over the surface of AP. Okay. So, what is happening as the pressure 
increases is that the structure of the flame is changing. You, it looks as if the height of the diffusion flame is increasing and its influence over the burn rate is decreasing. This is the qualitative behavior which more precisely will be discussed later. Okay. So, as I mentioned, we will use this example later to show how a theoretical framework based on simplified version of conservation equations can be used to construct a predictive model for understanding the steady and steady combustion of composite solid propellants. This is one example and of course, uh, it goes without saying that this is an example where the flame over the surface is completely laminar. As I said, the, uh, the size of this red color circle is about 200 microns. Okay. And the flame standoff distance is at the maximum a few tens of microns. So, if you use this length scale and velocity scale, the velocity of the gases that come off from the surface is a few meters per second. And if you use this length scale and the velocity scale along with uh, viscosity under these conditions, you can calculate the Reynolds number and show that the flow in these three cases are well within the laminar regime. Okay. The other example I wanted to show is uh, flame structure in what is called uh, Urja gasifier stove. What you see here in the picture on the left is uh, what is called a jet in cross flow uh, flame. Uh, there is a jet, there is a stream of fuel gases that are coming in this direction, in the vertical direction and there are, this stream is surrounded by uh, 18 uh, holes which are issuing air and the flame that you see is formed between the fuel gases that are moving in the vertical direction with the air that is coming from the cross flow direction. Okay. So, air jets, uh, 18 air jets in cross flow of fuel. So, you have fuel coming like this and oxidizer jets coming like this and this is a flame structure that is formed. Uh, so, 18 air jets in cross flow of fuel which is nothing but producer gas from gasification of uh, biomass. Okay. It forms an ensemble of laminar non premix flames in the Urja stove. Okay. And here, of course, the heat transfer this is used for domestic cooking and the heat transfer from the flame to the vessel and uh, pollutant formation and uh, heat transfer aspects everything is controlled by uh, laminar flames. Here again, you can calculate, of course, it is easy to see from the, uh, the picture of the flame itself that it is laminar. Of course, you can uh, uh, get estimates for Reynolds number and show it is laminar. Another thing that can be done and that was done is you can get, uh, you can make temperature measurements of uh, uh, temperature measurements with time for this flame, calculate the spectra okay, uh, and it can be shown that the spectra corresponds to a unsteady laminar flow and it is not a turbulent flow. And a CFD simulation of the same uh, flame with the uh, effect of the vessel included is uh, shown on the right and comparison between the experimentally measured efficiency and the CFD, uh, the efficiency computed from CFD is also shown, it matches very well. So, the these examples I wanted to show just to uh, uh, emphasize that uh, conservation equations have been known for a long time. but judicious application of a combination of simplified models and CFD is required to gain insights and it is important to recognize that there are situations where laminar flames are a good, uh, laminar flames control the dynamics and much can be learned by using these principles judiciously. Yes. Uh, the definition of efficiency here is the uh, uh, mass flow rate uh, is the uh, heat transferred to the vessel. Uh, per unit time divided by the mass flow rate of the fuel multiplied by the calorific value of the fuel, this thermal efficiency. So, with that I uh, will quickly uh, go through uh, conservation equations in simplified forms. You may have uh, uh, gone through derivation of these uh, equations in your fluid mechanics class. Okay. So, the mass conservation principle remember uh, that dm by dt is equal to 0 that if you track a parcel of mass m, its mass will not change as it goes through the flow field. When expressed in uh, uh, an Eulerian format will be in this form. Okay. Uh, the first term is the uh, rate of change of uh, 
mass inside a small control volume okay and the second term is the uh, net uh, out, outflow of mass that goes out of the control volume okay in a simple control volume analysis you can with a simple control volume analysis you can derive this equation so what it essentially states is that if you look at a control volume the rate of change of mass inside the control volume should be equal to the difference in the mass that enters minus the difference uh, the difference in the mass that enters and leaves okay under steady condition that means when the mass inside the control volume is not changing with time this equation will simply uh, reduce to the more familiar form which is density times velocity times area is equal to constant okay. this is the momentum balance in one dimension uh, the first term is again the rate of change of momentum inside the control volume uh, and the second term is the uh, combination of uh, net outflow of momentum flux and the forces acting on the control volume uh, here for simplicity i have ignored uh, uh, the stresses and forces because of viscous effects i have included only the uh, pressure terms uh, what is important here is uh, under steady conditions that means the first term in the equation is zero and excluding viscous effects and detonation detonation involves shock waves supersonic flows and large changes in pressure if we exclude these situations this equation will essentially reduce to a condition where pressure is constant remember that we use this condition yesterday when we did equilibrium calculations for a methane air premix flame that the pressure is everywhere roughly the same is uh, follows from this idea so you can see that uh, under steady conditions and if the cross section area is not changing with uh, location then we have p plus rho u squared equals constant okay. uh, remember that a velocity scale for a laminar flame uh, uh, hydrocarbon air laminar flame is 0.4 meters per second and density let us say is about 1 uh, kilogram per meter cube so if you take density to be 1 kilogram per meter cube and u the velocity to be about 0.4 meters per second rho u squared would be 0.16 pascals so 0.16 pascals compared to an atmospheric pressure of 101325 is very small and that's the reason why we assume that the pressure everywhere is approximately the same okay again similar forms for energy conservation the first term is the unsteady term the rate of change of energy inside a control volume the second term is the net outflow of energy and uh, this is uh, controlled by heat transfer uh, I have missed the work done by the pressure term but uh, let us uh, say because of this assumption that term is not important. Okay. So under steady conditions we will have the total energy change is only because of heat transfer into and out of a small control volume. Okay. Uh, these are these three are uh, equations that you would have seen in your fluid mechanics and heat transfer classes. What is new in uh, the context of combustion is the species equation remember that the concentration is not uniform okay, because of chemical reactions happening in a domain uh, the concentration of species will change both with time as well as spatial location okay. so it is important to keep it is required to keep track of the concentration of different uh, components or different species as a function of time and space and so this is a balance equation for species concentration uh, the species concentration can change because of uh, the flow which is uh, which is described by this term this is the species concentration change because of convection this is the species concentration change I am sorry this must be partial y i by partial x uh, this is the species con concentration change because of uh, diffusion okay and d is the diffusion coefficient it's the binary diffusion coefficient and what is unique to combustion is that the concentration of the species can change because of chemical reactions this is what is uh, uh, included here is this effect is included through the omega dot i term okay so the at a given location in space and at a given uh, as a function of time the concentration can change because of the flow bringing in some reactants and flow taking out some reactants or mass diffusion because of gradients in concentration at that place and more importantly it can change because of the reactant getting consumed because of chemical reaction 
or product forming because of you know uh, chemical reactions okay so under steady conditions this is this will simply become the convective term plus the diffusive term balanced by the reaction term okay in addition to all of this we need one more equation to relate the uh, thermodynamic variables this is done through the equation of state that the uh, gases follow the ideal gas equation is reasonably accurate for a variety of situations in uh, combustion and propulsion of course except when you are dealing with propulsion systems where you have uh, reactants entering at uh, critical conditions there you need to be careful and uh, use uh, appropriate equations of state but for most combustion systems gas turbines uh, and uh, internal combustion engines uh, this is a very good approximation in the gas phase and the usual rules of mixing apply when evaluating thermophysical properties remember that you have a mixture of gases you need to appropriately define uh, values for cp values for gamma and uh, other thermophysical properties and also transport properties like thermal conductivity and diffusion coefficients must be properly defined for a mixture of gases and variety of simplifications are usually done i'll just mention one simplification with respect to choice of diffusion coefficients uh, in combustion systems where air is used as an oxidizer the dominant species will be nitrogen because remember that uh, the stoichiometric ratio is about 16 or 17 so for every gram of fuel that you introduce into the combustion chamber there are 17 times more air and about 78 percent of air is nitrogen so if you uh, look at uh, a combustion chamber and do a mass budget of various species oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide and uh, uh, water vapor i think an example of it was uh, shown yesterday nitrogen will be the dominant species so one approximation that is made when choosing diffusion coefficients is to assume that every other species is diffusing into nitrogen so you can pick the uh, binary diffusion coefficient for uh, a fuel into nitrogen or carbon dioxide into nitrogen and that turns out to be a very good approximation for a variety of problems uh, any questions so far before we move on to the integral analysis yeah, yeah in the energy equation, equation uh, it seems that uh, there is no reaction uh, yeah that is a good question uh, remember that the definition of energy E or uh, uh, e written as enthalpy minus PV. The enthalpy will be defined uh, including the formation enthalpy and the sensible enthalpy. And once uh, you you can actually uh, uh, by substituting that definition of enthalpy or internal energy as formation component plus the uh, sensible component into this equation, you will recover uh, an energy release term because of combustion, uh, which would uh, which would have the following form it will look like this uh, I leave it as an exercise uh, okay when written in sensible uh, when you split the E yes this is only the formation enthalpy the so the, the I have written an equation for E in uh, the conservation equation you express E as H minus P V now the enthalpy is at enthalpy at a let us say assume a control volume okay. this can have a mixture of species okay so the enthalpy of enthalpy content of this control volume will be sum of enthalpy of all the components that are present inside okay H I into the mass fraction of that component Okay. and each one of these h i's the enthalpy of a component i for example enthalpy of carbon dioxide will be the enthalpy of formation of that component i plus the sensible enthalpy so once you substitute this back here and this definition of h into the energy conservation equations for example you have a term like this rho e will become and so on I am sorry yeah h minus p v so now this h will become sum of h i y i plus 
or minus other terms okay and some more algebraic manipulation is required you need to multiply the species conservation equation by the formation enthalpy sum over it and subtract it from here you will recover uh, equivalent of a chemical heat release term which let us call as q dot triple dash okay. we will have this following form okay. uh, we will look at a simple case of uh, where this is uh, we will derive a simple equation for this sometime yeah or maybe right away. Uh, so, this, this, yeah. uh, this energy equation deals about the end states, what, what he asked about the reaction rate, which may not be directly dealt with here. The, this is the reaction rate term. This is the reaction rate term. I just will give a simple demonstration of uh, what this equation means. Let us consider uh, a simple reaction where uh, fuel plus uh, 1 gram of fuel plus new grams of <coughs> oxidizer gives you 1 plus nu grams of products ok. Uh, if this is the only reaction that is allowed and let us say there is no reverse reaction it is a irreversible one step reaction. So, for every gram of fuel that is consumed ok this much of the oxidizer consumed must be nu times the fuel consumed because that is uh, constrained by the stoichiometry and it should result in the formation of this much of products. I will just explain what this equation means one more time w dot omega dot o is the rate of consumption of the oxidizer. The rate of consumption of the oxidizer must be equal to nu times the rate of consumption of fuel that is what is expressed by this part of the equation ok rate of consumption of oxidizer should be nu times the rate of consumption of fuel and when uh, omega dot f amount of fuel is consumed it should result in the formation of nu plus 1 times uh, products ok. So, if this much of fuel is consumed the amount of product that will form will be nu plus 1 times that and this equation simply expresses that fact. Now, omega dot i here i stands for if this is the reaction that we are looking at i stands for fuel oxidizer and products correct. So, now you can uh, express this uh, equation for q in terms of any one of these variables I will choose uh, fuel because what we are more familiar with is the calorific value of the fuel ok. So, if you substitute uh, or if you expand this by substituting these terms into that equation you will have q dot is equal to negative of omega dot f into enthalpy of formation of the fuel ok plus omega dot o enthalpy of formation of the oxidizer plus omega dot p times enthalpy of formation of the product ok. So, this now we can use this relationship between this relationship between omega dot f omega dot o and omega dot p which will make this as omega dot f enthalpy of formation of the fuel minus omega dot o is nu times omega dot f. So, this is nu times omega dot f enthalpy of formation of the oxidizer and omega dot p is negative nu plus 1 omega dot f. So, this is negative 1 plus nu omega dot f enthalpy of formation of the products ok. Now, you can combine the terms this is negative omega dot f h f 0 of the fuel plus nu h f 0 of the oxidizer minus 1 plus nu h f 0 of the products ok. The terms within the brackets you will immediately recognize is nothing but the negative of the enthalpy change of this reaction which is nothing but the negative of the enthalpy of combustion or the calorific value of the fuel. So, this is simply 
the rate of consumption of the fuel times the enthalpy of combustion okay the terms within the bracket is the negative of the enthalpy of the combustion so this will become negative delta h c and negative delta h c multiplied by negative omega dot f is delta h c now i hope it makes intuitive sense that the heat release because of combustion reactions return as some negative sum of omega dot i h f i for the simple case reduces to simply the rate of consumption of the fuel multiplied by the calorific value of the fuel which makes intuitive sense right is that clear any questions yeah all right let's uh, go back uh, to the conservation equations